In this video, we'll take a look at the Heathkit VX1 electronic voice control. First, a little background to help you understand the purpose of this unit. Most radio communications, including amateur radio, is done in a simplex mode where each station is either transmitting or receiving at a given time. A switch, sometimes called push to talk, determines whether the station is transmitting or receiving. An alternative method known as VOX, or Voice Operated Exchange or Voice Operated Transmit, automatically turns on transmit when someone speaks and turns it off when they stop speaking. The system has the advantage of leaving the operator's hands free when talking and makes it easier to have a conversational exchange. The circuit includes a delay between the sound stopping and switching direction to avoid the circuit turning off during short pauses in speech. This is sometimes referred to as hang time and is typically on the order of one to three seconds. Modern amateur radio supporting voice communications typically include Vox as a built-in feature, as well as supporting push-to-talk. Most early amateur radios, especially those designed for AM communications rather than single sideband, didn't support this feature. The purpose of the Heathkit VX1 was to add Vox support to a transmitter and receiver that lacked it. It did so by connecting to the microphone, speaker, transmitter, and receiver. When audio was detected from the microphone, it would switch the transmitter into transmit mode and switch the receiver into mute mode and disconnect it from the loudspeaker. When no audio was present for a period of time, it would switch back to receive mode. The VX1 was sold from 1957 through 1959. It was offered from a kit and typically sold in the U.S. for $23.95. It was primarily aimed at early AM transmitters that lacked Vox support. It was designed to work directly with the Heathkit DX100 transmitter or TX1 and RX1 transmitter and receiver, although it could be used with other transmitters with suitable connections. It's housed in a small box that's powered from the AC line. It used the same case as some other Heathkit products such as the AM2 and CA1 and matched the styling of Heathkit ham radio equipment of the time. The unit runs on 120 volts, referred to as 117 volts in the manual, at 50 to 60 hertz. It weighs about three pounds. It provides several switch circuits and switched outputs that can handle up to five amps. It uses vacuum tubes with the following tube lineup, a 12 AX7 speech amplifier, a 12 AT7 audio drive and anti-trip amplifier, a 6 AL5 bias voltage regulator, and a 12 BY7 relay switch tube. Three of the tubes are dual, so the four tubes are equivalent to seven. It also uses a selenium rectifier in the power supply. The front panel has a microphone jack of the type commonly used by microphones of the era. A cable from the back with the matching connector was used to connect to the radio's microphone jack so that audio could be routed to the transmitter. At the right is a power switch. The mode switch selects between Vox mode, where the unit controls transit and receive, standby mode, which forces the unit in receive mode, and manual mode which sets it to transmit mode. The time delay control adjusts the hang time or period of time that it remains in transmit mode when there's no audio detected. The receiver sensitivity control is adjusted so that audio from the receiver picked up from the microphone doesn't cause the unit to activate. The transmitter sensitivity control is adjusted so that the unit switches to transmit mode when there's spoken audio from the microphone but not when low level background noise is present. The rear panel has the microphone output cable previously mentioned. It also has the AC line cord. A cable with an octal plug, not present on this unit but it would have come out of the opening at the right, would connect to the transmitter such as a Heathkit TX1 or DX100. Other connectors on the rear panel were provided on a terminal strip. As I'll describe later, this unit's been modified to use RCA phono jacks. The original terminal screws would have provided a 4 to 8 ohm receiver output, a receiver output and speaker ground, a 4 to 8 ohm speaker connection, and voice controlled 117 volt AC to operate an antenna relay. Note that line voltage would have been present on two of the exposed terminals at the back, something that would certainly not meet safety standards today. The operation of the unit should be clear later in the video when I give a demonstration. The unit uses point to point wiring on a metal chassis. On the top, you can see the four tubes, switching relay, two transformers, filter capacitors, which are not original, 
and mode switch and time delay control. Underneath is most of the wiring as well as resistors, capacitors, and additional controls and connectors. The selenium rectifier is a little unusual as it's a sealed unit. These were solid state rectifiers and were prone to failing over time. This sealed unit might have been a little more reliable than the ones that had open plates. The manual mentioned that the unit could also be used as an audio preamplifier by tapping the output of the two-stage speech amplifier. If this was desired, you could move the microphone output cable to the output of the amplifier rather than directly at the microphone. To demonstrate the unit, I've hooked it up to a microphone, loudspeaker, and a Heathkit HR10B receiver as shown in the diagram. A microphone is connected to the VX1's mic input. The receiver's mute line is connected to the VX1 mute output. The receiver's speaker out is routed to the VX1 and then back out to the loudspeaker. I don't have a suitable transmitter, but we can still get the general idea with just the receiver. In standby mode, we can see and hear that the receiver is operating and the audio comes from the speaker. In manual mode, the system switches to transmit. The receiver is muted and the speaker is disconnected. In box mode, the unit will switch back into transmit if I speak into the microphone. Testing, one, two, three. Transmitting, and now going back to receive. When there's no audio, it will switch back to receive after a brief delay. The time delay control adjusts the delay or hang time. The receiver and transmitter sensitivity controls need to be adjusted so that a suitable audio level in the microphone activate box and audio from the receiver speaker does not. In practice, there's some interaction between the controls in order to adjust them correctly. I bought this unit on eBay in March of 2024. It came with an original manual dated 12-12-1957. The manual is the usual excellent Heathkit quality covering assembly, operation, and troubleshooting with many diagrams. I gave the unit an overall inspection and cleaning and checked that all resistors were within value. On an initial test it seemed to work. All tubes lit up and touching the microphone input made the relay toggle. There was a small crack in an insulator on the relay that I glued with super glue. I replaced two paper capacitors and three electrolytics with new ones I had on hand. I didn't test them first but simply replaced them due to the age and likelihood of failure. The ceramic capacitors were not replaced as they're not prone to failure with age. As mentioned, it uses a selenium rectifier which I would normally replace with a modern silicon diode and dropping resistor if I was to use the unit on a regular basis, but I decided to leave it original. The line cord was a little rough, but again, I don't plan to actually use this on a regular basis and kept it original. As mentioned, the rear panel connections were modified to use five RCA phono jacks. I reverse engineered the connections and determined them to be relay grounded on transmit, mute grounded on receive, speaker out connected to receiver in on receive, receiver in connected to speaker out on receive, and side tone, a preamplifier output connected to the grid of the 12AT7 via a 2.2 mega ohm resistor. These changes also removed the hazardous 120 volts AC that would have originally been present on the back. The microphone cable was wired to the mic input as per the schematic and the octal plug and cable were not present. Further testing indicated it wasn't working as reliably as expected and I could see an oscillation on the audio signal on an oscilloscope. I noticed that the transmitter sensitivity control that should have been 100k measured 470k ohms and was intermittent on one end. I had a suitable new part in my junk box and replaced it. This corrected the problem. I demonstrated using the VX1 with my Heathkit HR10B receiver. I don't have a suitable transmitter to use with it. I have a Heathkit DX60B, but it would require some modifications to support push to talk so that it would work with the VX1. I don't know the history of who owned this unit, but as the wiring on the back panel was modified and the octal plug removed, I assume it was put to use but not with the Heathkit DX100. The VX1 seems to be quite rare. The second edition of the Chuck Pence and Heathkit book doesn't list it, although the third edition does. An eBay search of old listings didn't show any units except the one I bought, 
although there were some manuals for sale. This was the only unit of this type made by Heathkit. It's an interesting device that added the Vox function to early AM transmitters. It only worked with transmitters that had press-to-talk support and receivers with muting and external speakers. By the 1960s, single sideband operation was popular and most transceivers included Vox as a built-in feature. This would explain why the VX1 was only sold for three years and discontinued by 1959. It is of historical interest and can still be fun to use with an old vintage AM station.